Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to another week of what I'm calling Divine December. And although it's the week before Christmas, Sensei says things are going to get kind of serious. That's because this week, the sun will escort Saturn over to Capricorn for the first time in 30 years. And it means that life is about to get serious. From my smartphone to yours, keep streaming for your weekly Namaste Today. Welcome to Namaste Today. I'm your host and spiritual life coach, Sensei Christopher Wateki. Welcome, my friend. Namaste. It is the week before the holidays, and usually this week everyone gets a little tense because no matter what faith or religion you are, no matter what your practice is in the holiday, everyone has a lot of meeting, a lot of greeting, a lot of connecting, and that makes us tense. But this year, things might get not just tense, but serious. That's because Saturn is moving into Capricorn for the first time in about 30 years, and it means you're going to feel the weight of responsibility on your shoulders. Now, this can be a good thing, or this can be a hard thing, and we'll be talking about both possibilities. In this week's show, I'm going to walk you through the week, and what you can expect is the Sun and Saturn cross the border, and then later in our tea time, I'm going to break it down for all 12 signs of what Saturn and Capricorn will mean for you. But first, let's take a look at the week's moods and your zodiac weather. This zodiac weather is from Monday, December 18th to Friday, December 22nd, 2017. Looking at your five day mood cast, well, it's an intense week to say the least. It starts with a new moon and ends with step zero. Very serious. Let's drill down. On Monday, it's sunny and super committed as the new moon creates a mega stellium asking you to commit to your life purpose. On Tuesday, it's sunny and clear. Step nine will rule the day, which means ego is out to play. On Wednesday, it's sunny and solid as you begin to manifest your life purpose and where you're pointing your life, but Saturn now moves into Capricorn. On Thursday, it's cloudy, overcast, and likely tested. The moon in Aquarius allows you to detach, but it also allows you to go too far. And then on Friday, it's sunny and serious as step zero to step one rules the day, transitioning us into Capricorn. Well, this week is going to be a powerful week. You're setting intentions and you're starting to get very serious. In our next segment this week, I'm going to walk you through the week and talk about Saturn. Taking a sneak peek at this upcoming week, I coined this week Soul Commitment. And really, this week, I have to say, is probably the most responsible week of the entire year. And it couldn't come at a worse time, right? Right before the holiday, right when we were distracted with everything we want to visit, everyone we want to see, all of our presents as we're doing gift giving and that sort of thing. So this week will feel like there's a lot of responsibility on your shoulders. And you might think that it's due to the holidays and just the end of the year sort of wrap up. But I say it's very much due to Saturn. This week, the Sun and Saturn are conjoining for the entire week. That means they are together and within what we call orb. This means that you feel this sense of having to get things done. And one of the weird things about Saturn is it's often associated with the illusion of time. So a lot of times when we have a planet such as the Sun tied up with Saturn, we suddenly are very aware of the time. We're aware that we're running out of time. We are concerned about being on time. And that's not just in the moment, that's also in the future and for everything that we want to do. So the first thing you have to say is try not to get caught up on being too serious on yourself or forcing too much responsibility. It's not that life has suddenly become more serious or that you have more responsibility. It's that you're now more aware of your responsibilities. You're more aware of the time and you're more aware of whether or not you feel in control of your life. So that's going to be the theme for the whole week, just for starters. But we have even more going on on top of that. For one, Mercury is still retrograde for the entire week. And with this retrograde, we are still rethinking, rethinking what the story we were born to live actually means for us. And Mercury will go to its stationary step, step 13 Sagittarius, 
And the interesting thing about step 13 is, usually step 13 is a breakdown and a breakthrough. So I am guessing, <laughs> or predicting I should say, that most people will probably have some sort of radical change in their story right before Mercury goes direct. So we've all been on the path to the story we were born to live. We're all trying to understand what we believe in. That's what the Sun in Sagittarius is. That's what Saturn in Sagittarius has been. And with Mercury retrograde, we've been having kind of one last look as to whether or not we believe in this or don't believe in this. So I, we begin the week with a mega new moon where all these different parts of yourself, five different parts, five planets in a stellium, all parts of yourself are going to commit to a particular life direction and a life story. And you will believe that you know this is the way it's supposed to go. But Sensei says, once you start analyzing the hows, in other words, how are we going to do it, not what we're going to go for, you might have a last minute realization that you belong still on another plane, on another dimension, or uh, going to another direction. So this week is kind of a weird oxymoron. We feel this huge responsibility, but we're not quite sure for most of the week of which way we're going. And I think that's the whole point of the week. It's to come to clarity about which way we're going. Now, don't worry about whether or not you go anywhere at this point, okay? Like I said, with the sun conjuncting Saturn, there's this sense that you have to get going now, that you're running out of time. That's not true. The truth is, is that Mercury doesn't even go direct until December 23rd, okay? two days before Christmas, and it's not until then that you really are kind of be going to get counted on for anything in your karmic story. So although it feels like a hustle bustle week, although it feels like you've got to get things done, truth is you don't have to turn in your homework until Christmas, <laughs> okay? So don't worry too much. It is just an exercise after all. So I want to walk you through the week and point out a couple of astrological observations I have. Monday is going to be the new moon. Technically, the new moon happens really early at night. So I actually did a new moon special last week. You might want to watch that again. I talked about it for all 12 signs. And it has to do with where we're setting intentions. There are many parts of yourself. Venus, you're receiving. Mercury, your thoughts. Saturn, your responsibility part. Sun, your heart. The moon, your emotions. And the galactic center, which is the story you're born to live, all these parts of your consciousness are all chiming in very early Monday morning for what you commit to. Step 26 rules a day. Obviously, the moon is in Capricorn, uh, excuse me, is in Sagittarius as well, Mercury retrograde. And that means that uh, our feelings are very much tied to this belief center. So we start, a, we start the week pretty committed and feeling rather serious. And that's, that's okay. Tuesday is sunny and clear. Tuesday is really about taking action and moving forward. Tuesday will probably be when people are freaking out about buying gifts for people, you know what I mean? Like honking at each other and stuff in malls. Uh, but you're gonna feel your story moving forward. You're gonna feel progress moving forward. Things should feel good on Tuesday, but they might be a little hyperactive. Wednesday, I'm predicting to be sunny and solid. Wednesday is technically the day where what you be is what comes, okay? It is a step 28 day. The moon will be in Aquarius. Um, uh, actually, it's in Capricorn and then moves into Aquarius. So you'll still be uh, feeling very serious about what needs to be done. And Saturn moves into Capricorn on Wednesday. So technically, responsibility shifts on Wednesday. We feel responsibility shift on Wednesday. And Wednesday is definitely a good day to make a first step on something that you want to make a change on, okay? It's also a day where you want to practice what you preach. You want to live by what you believe on Wednesday. Thursday will be cloudy and tested. Thursday will probably be another day you don't want to go out shopping in the public, okay? People are going to be a little crazy. The moon moves into Aquarius. That allows us to detach from certain things, but that's also when things get abused because people are detached. They go ahead and say things or they hate blog or stuff like that. So uh, Thursday is really the final degree of Sagittarius, and the sun and Saturn actually conjoin on Thursday. And this is what's amazing. I have been watching Saturn changing signs for many years now. I've been doing this for almost 12 years. And whenever Saturn or Pluto crosses a sign, it's almost always 
kind of like escorted by another planet. In this case, the Sun. The Sun and Saturn are moving into Capricorn hand in hand. It's really amazing. So we're going to feel our heart get serious. We're going to feel ourselves get dedicated. And that happens on Thursday. And then Friday is kind of a wonky day. I'm saying it's going to be sunny and it's going to be serious at the same time. That's because we're at step zero Capricorn. And right now the Earth is moving faster than it does in the rest of the year. So we actually will have uh, go from step zero to step one almost immediately. In fact, uh, we have a degree or a step number this uh, this week that is less than 24 hours. So it happens, we actually go through almost two steps in a 24-hour period. So you're going to feel life kind of moving fast as a result. You feel things moving fast. And that's because we're going through conscious shifts sooner. So Friday starts off really wonky at step zero. And then as the day progresses, you start to get your heart in line. And now we're focused on Capricorn. We're focused on control, making decisions, getting things done. And you're probably tied up with holiday stuff. Okay, so I think the Saturn Capricorn story has a lot more to tell. Go steep yourself some tea and let's have our weekly tea time. Hello, my brothers and sisters, and welcome to our tea time. This week's tea time topic is Saturn gets serious. Seriously. <laughs> and I'm going to be making that joke probably for about three years now with Saturn and Capricorn. Saturn and Capricorn is a double dose of the same energy. If you don't know astrology, Saturn rules Capricorn, so they're the same consciousness. And so when you have the same consciousness in the same sign, it gets very extreme. The other thing that happens is the very principles of that energy get redefined. So Saturn is the part of us that can make a decision. A decision is an incision in consciousness. It's our ability to cut away. It's our ability to uh, not look at one thing so that we can focus on another. It's also our ability to control and organize things. So people get very controlling when Saturn is in Capricorn. There's a lot of struggle for control, control in your life, control of the outcome, all right? And sometimes a lot of people, because they're so focused on the end result, that for them is a justification for really shifty means. So some people really get kind of down and dirty with Saturn and Capricorn because they're so focused on their goal and their goal is so important uh, that they're willing to do anything to get there. So those are some of the dark parts of Saturn and Capricorn. Part of the good parts in Saturn and Capricorn is a lot of people have a hard time disciplining themselves. A lot of people have a difficult time getting in control of their life. A lot of people have uh, hard troubles with making decisions for themselves. And so these people who are usually irresponsible or have difficulties stepping into their power, Saturn and Capricorn lights these people up, gives them the power to finally step forward. And so you tend to see tremendous change happen when Saturn moves into Capricorn. Tremendous change as far as who's in control and with Saturn and Capricorn, what is control anyways? So the very definition of what control is gets sort of an update. Now to give you a little astrological history here, we have had Saturn and Capricorn every 30 years or so. In fact, it, it stays in a sign for about three years, okay? And in that time, it'll back out and come back in. And overall, it's a three-year per sign. And Saturn hits that sign every 30 years. So the last time we had Saturn in Capricorn was February 12th, 1988, and it stayed in Capricorn until 1991. Now, for those of you who are awake enough to remember that time, I certainly do. I was in high school at the time, but that was the time where we saw the country move from George Bush, Reaganomics, conservative, to don't stop believing the Bill, the Clintons. Okay, like that's when, and there was a huge shift, and we had Ross Perot coming out and talking about you know, finances. So you felt a real tonal shift as far as what is control, what should leadership be. We redefined what leadership should be. And we ended up with the, um, you know, the Democrats in power uh, for that entire decade of the 90s, basically, right? Until we went back to Bush. That's so funny. Now, 30 years before that, just to give you some historical reference, Saturn was in Capricorn from January 1959 to 1962. Interesting thing, at that time, that was when JFK came into power. 
So John F. Kennedy came into power when Saturn was in Capricorn. And we moved from conservative again to Democrat. And we got super hopeful. Don't ask what your country can do for you. What can you do for your country? Suddenly putting citizens into this new control of their own life, control of their future, control of their legacy. And of course, at that time, JFK was killed, probably by the Bushes. <laughs> Just kidding, but possibly. And as a result, we had a fall. But the point is, major shift in power and control the last time Saturn was in Capricorn. And then the time before that was the Great Depression. Saturn was in Capricorn between 1932 and 1935. And this was the point of the New Deal. When we started using government money to help our country overcome the Depression, all these government-funded sort of uh, programs to get people employed and moving forward. We built probably every state park that we're now minimizing, uh, strangely enough, all this minimization of all that national uh, treasure that we created back then. And again, a huge shift in power. And again, interestingly enough, the power went to the Democrats. Okay, the power was in the Democrats' hands at that time. I'm not saying one is better or the other, but I am pointing out that every time Saturn goes into Capricorn, we the people, which I think is God universe's intent, uh, tends to set forward as the predominant force. So here we are again. Here we are again with Saturn and Capricorn, which means it's time to stand up, take responsibility for what you believe in. And that's what Saturn and Sagittarius has been the last three years. Saturn entered Sagittarius in 2014, and between 2014 and 2017, that's what we've been serious about, what we believe in. And as you've probably observed yourself, at least here in North America, people have completely moved into different schools and camps as far as their beliefs. It's not just as simple as, you know, Democrat and Republican. It's also, you know, atheist and spiritual. It's also radical and, and you know, uh, and uh, middle ground, you know. So everyone has kind of moved into certain camps about what they believe. That's what Saturn and Sag has done. And now that Saturn's in Capricorn, people are now going to go out and literally start marching, so to speak, start moving forward and taking back their power. And that's exactly what needs to happen is for each individual to stand up and take back their power. So with that great introduction, I'm going to give you a rundown for all 12 signs. I'm going to first tell you what your focus was when Saturn was in Sagittarius for the last three years. Then I'll focus on what your focus will now be with Saturn and Capricorn for the next three years. And this is one of those things where you definitely want to listen to your rising sign, your B story, uh, more than your A story because it's more prevalent in your life story than it is in your immediate uh, uh, sun sign story. But both are relevant, both will count. Now for Aries, Aries just spent the last three years uh, coming into a new belief about themselves, what they believe, uh, what their life purpose is, what gives them meaning and fulfillment, and what doesn't. So Aries have basically been figuring out what to chase after. Now that Saturn's in Capricorn, the air eye will be focusing on changing the way they make decisions and aiming for a new legacy. But it will be three years before its legacy. This first chapter in 2018 is all about what goes into a decision as an Aries. What goes into a decision? Your heart, your feelings, your pocketbook, etc. Taurus. Taurus have just spent the last three years transforming. No shift. <laughs> like, and we fought it the whole time. Uh, so the last three years, Taurus have been identifying boundary skirmishes where they need to uh, what they believe about where the boundaries should be, when they should open up, when they should shut down. Now that Saturn's moving into Capricorn, Tauruses will now change the core of what they believe. So you're going to see a lot of radical change with Taurus. The entire year of 2018, Tauruses will be asking themselves, what do they really believe in? What do they believe in with themselves? What do they believe in in life? And many Tauruses are going to begin an educational pursuit now for a while. And that's true for me. I'm starting to learn, learn, learn about spirituality now. This will lead to where uh, their life purpose ends up. Okay, so that will be three years from now, though, when it comes to life purpose. This year, it's about belief. Geminis. Geminis just spent three years uh, in their head <laughs> thinking about what relationships ought to be. And now that Saturn is coming out of Sagittarius, they're aiming for a certain relationship pattern. Now that Saturn's in Capricorn, Geminis will be focusing on trust. Trust comes down to where the boundary is drawn with themselves, where the boundary is drawn 
uh, with others. But for 2018, it'll all be your boundaries with yourself. That's sex, that's death, that's taxes, that's fears, that's emotions, etc. Yes, it has an effect on others, but you won't really be getting to that in 2018. You'll be focused on yourself. It will lead to Geminis transforming themselves. Cancers. Cancers just spent three years focusing on their lifestyle. That's health, how they work, where they work, where they live, what's their day in and day out in the factory of life. And now that Saturn is graduating Sagittarius, they have an idea of the life they want to live. They will now focus on their mirage and their marriages. So this is huge for Cancers. They're going to be transforming the way they are in relationships, but Cancers, slow down. All of 2018 is how you treat yourself and how you allow yourself to be treated. So don't even get distracted thinking it's about the man or the woman right now. It's about how you talk to yourself for 2018. Leos. Leos have just spent the last three years figuring out in their heart what their dreams are. What's going to come next? What are they going to pursue? What is love? What is romance? What is creativity? Now that Saturn is moving into Capricorn, Leos are going to focus on their health and their day-to-day existence. This will turn into a whole lifestyle change in three years, but in 2018, it is all health and it's all daily uh, routine. Virgos. Virgos just spent the last three years coming up with a new philosophy about how they ought to feel. And many Virgos implemented self-compassion for the first time in their life. A lot of my clients anyways. Now that Saturn's in Capricorn, it's about your self-love, your creativity, and your personal dreams. It also means romantic love as well. But hold off. 2018 is all about self-love. So all of this next year is about loving yourself on a greater level. Libras. Libras just spent three years focusing on their attitude and their message and their mind games. Now that they have their mind made up, that's kind of funny, they will now focus on their feelings. So this will be a very emotional year in 2018 for Libras and Libra Risings. You are learning how to emotionally cope. You're learning how to emotionally nurture. Nothing you think will make it better. It comes down to how you feel and how you respond. This will lead to an emotional shift a clearing of your family karma, and eventually a new emotional foundation in three years from now. The next year is all about facing emotional baggage that you have been ignoring with your mind, most likely. I know you, Libras. Scorpios. Scorpios are just spent three years focusing on what they believe in is really valuable. That's money, that's manifestation, that's abundance. Now that Saturn's in Capricorn, Scorpios now need to focus on mental health. Okay, so all the self-stinging Scorpios or the Scorpios that sting others, most of that is triggered by dis-ease of the mind. And so Scorpios will be uh, clearing up mental health issues for 2018. This will lead to their ability to think sharper. This will lead to their ability to come up with a new attitude and a new mental approach on life. For Scorpios who happen to be content makers, like if you create intellectual property, you will likely go through a, um, a uh, what's the word I'm looking for, revolution in the way you think about what you create. So, uh, sa- uh, Mercury retrograde. Sagittarius. Sag has just spent three years with Saturn in their sign, so they've been really hit hard. So be kind to your local Sagittarius. They were going to a Saturn transit, okay? That's not easy. But the happy thing is, is they have graduated. They are now in responsible of their behavior. They're responsible for how they, the actions they take. And now that Saturn's moving into Capricorn, they will focus on self-esteem for the next year. So it'll be self-esteem. But that leads to money, productivity, and abundance. But for 2018, it's all your self-esteem issues. Capricorns. Capricorns, this is going to be a hit and miss. Any Capricorn who is completely like on the wrong mountain or in it for control and control's sake, any of your darker Capricorns that, that you know don't care about the people they step on to get there, and that's with young Capricorns, okay? So the first thing that you will experience in 2018 will be a crash of those systems. I have to say first though, Saturn and Sagittarius for Capricorns was about building faith. So Capricorns have faith now. It's time to rebuild. It's time to reconstruct. So they will be breaking down the old ego in 2018. Knowing Capricorns, they'll probably feel it as failure because that's the way Capricorns think. They're very success-driven. So anything you're not meant to be pursuing, anything your ego is not meant to be fighting for will crash down in 2018. This is so that you can be rebuilt. And in three years, you will have a new character, a new I am, a new ego. 
Aquarius is. Aquarius has just spent the last three years figuring out where they belong in the world. That's people, that's relationships, that's neighborhoods, that's the part of the world they actually live in. It's the social status, it's what they do in the world, all that social identifying. Now that Saturn's in Capricorn, they will face their fears. They will face their karma. They will face the things that they have been putting off for most of their life until they were successful. Only what they don't realize is these are the things that keep them from being successful. <laughs> Okay, so 2018 will be a clearing of karma, a clearing of fear. For that reason, I think Aquariuses will have more of a challenged year next year than usual because they have to face all the boogeyman. But what this leads to is faith in yourself and your true spiritual calling and mission. And then finally, the Pisces. Pisces just spent the last three years focusing on career, legacy, and taking leadership of their life, which is gigantic. And for them, that's based on what they believe in and what they don't believe in. Now that Saturn's moving into Capricorn, it is time to release the Pisces to the world. And that's a good thing because Pisces have a lot of good synergy energy that the world needs. So Pisces now must be responsible in the world. They must find their calling. So for the next year in 2018, I'm expecting a ton of Pisces just to pick up and move. So if you are in a relationship with the Pisces, give them a kiss. They might be going, okay? So in 2018, they're going to be cutting away from their old life and heading towards a new fishbowl. They may not know where that fishbowl is. They may not know why they're going to that fishbowl, but they'll be heading in that direction by the end of 2018. So as you can hear, things will be quite serious with Saturn in Capricorn, and we will be moving forward with taking responsibility in our life. I, for one, am very grateful. The last time Saturn was in Capricorn, I was the shift. <laughs> like I, That was the first time I realized I had potential in life. So for those who accept responsibility and enjoy it, like me, you will love Saturn in Capricorn. For those who avoid responsibility and avoid making decisions, it might beat the shift out of you. <laughs> all right, friends, that's all I have for this week. Just one little announcement here. I am doing a countdown to 2018 two-hour seminar. I'm going to talk about all 12 signs and risings, of course, in January, February, March, April, May, June, all the way to December to give you a clear outline in that two-hour seminar of what you can expect in 2018. Someone asked me, doesn't a reading do that? No, I do not spend two hours in a reading talking about your next year, okay? Like, in a reading, I get down to the bigger picture of the nitty-gritty. So, if you want a good forecast of next year, come on down and read more about it at soulmart.me. All right, friends, that's all I have for the week. I hope you have a fabulous week leading up to the holidays. Remember, I love you, and to live, love, be.